QR codes are everywhere. Brochures, tickets, e-wallets, even banks. With the government pushing for a cashless Malaysia and getting all of us to use e-wallets, who even needs physical cash anymore? We can really just get by with our phones. So that got me thinking, how does QR pay work? QR code stands for Quick Response Codes. It's a two-dimensional barcode with a ton of data and can be instantly scanned with your phone. Basically, a QR code is an encoded piece of data that's either alphabetical, numerical, binary, or kanji, and they originated in Japan's Toyota factory to track the manufacturing of car parts. When scanned, these checkered squares will be converted into an action, like bringing you to a website. The number of small squares per side can vary. More squares means more data, and vice versa for less. Anyone can make your own code online and even add your own cute little designs too. But there are a couple of elements elements that will look the same in every QR code. Look at these corner squares here. They're position markers to align the scanner with the QR code, while these red lines tell the scanner what to do, like play a video or transfer money. So now you know what a QR code is. How does that work with payments? QR payments are essentially instant bank transfers. Instead of logging in someone's bank details, you scan their code instead. If the red line is the instruction to transfer money, the rest of the code are details for their bank account. That means, when you QR pay for your lunch at a cafe, you're basically transferring money into the business's registration account on the spot, unlike credit cards, which may take up to 48 hours to process. And because QR pay is fully digitized in most systems, there's no need for a physical receipt. Merchants will be directly notified on their account to check your payment. There are a few types of QR payments. The first is a static QR code, where you scan the merchant's code and manually key in how much you have to pay. Next is the dynamic QR code, where merchants set the amount you have to pay, giving them more control. The other is a temporary QR. So temporary QR, that means actually they have the system, the so-called post system, where they key in the amount and print out the receipt. After that, you can scan the QR. Then after one minute or maybe after the police again, this QR cannot use anymore. You'll then confirm the transaction on your phone and your happy meal is paid for without ever having to touch your wallet. So who's even regulating all these QR codes for scanning and paying with? Well, the main manager of it is Bank Nagara's Payments Network Malaysia, or Paynet, which basically oversees all QR pay transactions so that it's secure, including banks and e-wallets. Banks must also be a part of SWIFT, the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication. SWIFT actually is controlled by Bank Nagara as well. All the banks have to join that the member compulsory. This was enforced in 2017, so that QR pay is protected from cyber attacks. That means QR pay is safe, right? Well, yes they are. But the problem in QR codes is that no human can actually read it, and it's impossible to spot if a code is malicious. In 2018, about 55 million ringgit was stolen in Guangdong, China, where QR pay is common. Scammers were sticking their own codes over businesses' original ones to steal data or hack bank accounts. So be sure you review all the bank details on screen and verify who you're actually paying to. Because even though the transaction itself is safe, you still need to check on the credibility. Don't forget to like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also leave us a comment down below if there are any topics you'd like us to take a look into.